Hey guys, Richard Holden here, Ford guys, Chevy guys, all saying the same thing. Hey Richard, stop doing that really expensive stuff. Stop it with the turbos and the blowers and the nitrous. What about the basic bolt-on stuff? Well, Ford guys, Chevy guys, here you go. In this video, we're going to take a look at your basic bolt-ons, you know, your low-buck upgrades, the things that we save up from each paycheck, buy them one at a time and make them one at a time because that's how we can afford them. So what are they worth? Things like long tube headers or mild camshafts, intake manifolds or four-barrel carburetors, what should we spend our money on and what are they worth? Let's check it out. To get things started, let's take a look at our small block Chevy. And it needs to be known that our small block Chevy was not actually a junkyard motor. It did start out that way, but it was rebuilt. And the reason that we rebuilt it and put Ford's rods and more importantly, Ford's pistons in it with valve release is because we were eventually going to install ported heads and a big camshaft and a big intake manifold to make lots of power. This thing eventually made almost 550 horsepower with that right combination. But before we did that, we ran all of these normal basic bolt-on mods at lower power levels to show you guys what happened. Now we did the same thing with the Ford and we'll be getting into that in a minute. But on this small block Chevy, it was rebuilt. It had a four bolt block, a cast crank, it did have four rods and forged flat top pistons. Now, that doesn't mean that all of this stuff won't work with your mo your existing motor that you have or any junkyard motor that you might get, including any sort of a smog motor. This motor actually originally came with a set of smog heads on it, a set of 882 big chamber heads. They were just freshened up. Otherwise, they had the stock valve job. We did do a spring upgrade on them because later on we would be putting a camshaft in it. We ran this motor with stock exhaust manifolds, with a stock two barrel intake, a stock 2G carburetor, and a stock truck camshaft that we got from a local auto parts store. So run in this configuration as our baseline, basically as a two barrel small block Chevy, although with flat top pistons, our combination produced 241 horsepower and 359 foot pounds of torque. As you might imagine, a two barrel small block Chevy, low compression deal, um, was designed to make torque with that stock camshaft and those heads and that induction system, and it doesn't make a ton of power. So here's how we improved that. The first thing we did was put a set of long tube headers on it. Long tube headers would be a good upgrade. It's always recommended that you put them on. Usually they enhance torque production quite a bit, but here's what happened when we ran the headers on this combination. This is the smallest power gain I've ever tested with long tube headers on any combination. And it might be because of the two barrel induction system or the mild camshaft or the bad heads or yada, yada, yada. Normally what we see is the, even when we don't gain a lot of peak power on a real mild combination, we usually get pretty good torque gains down low with the long tube headers. And it's a normal upgrade and it's still something I would recommend despite these results. We usually get a lot more torque enhancement. But that's what happened when we put the headers on. They were inch and five eighths long tubes, flow tech headers, I believe. And they were designed, I think, for a truck application. But we didn't stop there. So what we did was go from the two barrel induction system to a factory four barrel induction system. And the reason that we did that is because that's something that might come with the motor. And it's also something that's easily accessible at any of the wrecking yards. Guys basically just get rid of these cast iron four barrel quadrajet manifolds. So we ran the quadrajet manifold with a four barrel quadrajet carburetor. This one came from Sean Murphy Inductions, but anybody that's rebuilt the quadrajet, you would get these kind of results. The thing that I like about this combination is that we picked up quite a bit of power. So we went from 248 horsepower up to 278. So we picked up 30 horsepower from the induction system. Torque was also up to 385 foot-pounds. But what I like most is if you look all the way down below 2500, we really didn't lose any torque compared to the two-barrel. And that's a common misconception. Oh, the two-barrel is going to offer a lot more low-speed power because, you know, it's going to be smaller and responsive. And it doesn't really do that. The four-barrel is just as good and then and then a lot better everywhere. The nice thing about a quadrajet upgrade also is that you're probably going to get, you're probably going to improve fuel mileage because the small primaries with a quadrajet actually do very well. Plus you get to flip the air cleaner lid over and get the bo that all quadrajets are, are famous for. So after doing this induction system, we started to think, well, what if a guy didn't want to do the cast iron quadrajet manifold and wanted to do an aluminum one? Aluminum obviously helps dissipate heat. It um, is lighter, so you get less weight and more performance. And most guys would put an aluminum intake, so that or aluminum intake, yeah, aluminum intake manifold. So that's what we did. We put a YN8004 four barrel manifold with the same quadrajet, and we did pick up power. 
peak power was up to 286 horsepower, but notice below 4,000 RPM that that lost out in torque production. Uh, peak torque was down to 372 foot-pounds with the Wyan compared to the Quadrajet. So if you're most concerned about torque production below 4,000 RPM, the factory Quadrajet manifold actually works pretty, pretty well, although it is <laughs> quite a bit heavier. But the final thing that we did to this, and, and this is something that some of you m might not go for, this is, these things are more common, but what a guy would do then is put like an RV style cam in there, especially if he's wanting to use this in a truck and, and to use it for towing and stuff. So here's what happened, and we did two things here, and I, and I apologize. I wish we would have just done the camshaft or just the heads. But what we did, because we were tearing it apart and changing the camshaft, we also changed from a set of ported 882 heads. So, and the porting that we did is very, very minor, and it's something you could definitely do at home. Just do some bowl work and do some port matching, which was all that was done. These were done by the guys at Powerhead. We also put a Pure Energy 246 cam in, very small, very mild, very, very good idle. And as you can see, we gained torque everywhere with this combination. Peak power numbers were up to 340 horsepower, and peak torque was right at 400 foot-pounds, 399.7 <laughs> foot-pounds. And, and as you can see, it gained torque everywhere. So for drivability, it would be great. It's, it has as much idle vacuum as stock. And it just adds lots and lots of power everywhere. So this is a good, really good, mild combination that demonstrates what you can do with a small block Chevy for your average guy. You guys could do this at home. Now let's take a look at what happened when we did similar modifications to the small block Ford. After taking a look at the small block Chevy, now we can transition over to the small block Ford. This was actually a 5 liter Mustang engine, although these kind of mods would work equally well on a truck version of the 302 or even a carbureted version of the 302, although you'd have to look specifically at the intake manifold, but the camshafts definitely would add power the way that they add power even on a carbureted combination. But let's start out with our small block Ford. This was a 302, technically it was a 306. It was rebuilt as we talked about. It had flat top pistons with valve reliefs to allow us to run more camshaft. We would eventually run this thing with ported heads and nitrous and, and even a turbo and, and greatly exceed 600 horsepower with this combination with Boo. So it was a cool test motor, but we started out with this thing in basically bone stock trim. We ran the factory HO upper and lower intake manifold. We ran the factory throttle body. We ran the factory E7TE iron heads. It did have valve springs in it, again, like the Chevy, so that we could put a camshaft in it and run the camshaft with the stock heads. We had, uh, this one had ARP head studs in it, because again, we were going to be running boost on it after we added the uh, aluminum heads. But the obviously, the head studs are just there for kind of strength and sealing when we're adding boost to it later on. This was the, uh, as I said, the stock short block. We had the stock block, stock crank, Forge rods, forged flat top pistons with valve reliefs. We had the stock HO camshaft in here. And this was first run with a set of uh, shorty headers, which basically add very little, if any, power, uh, having done that test a number of times, versus the stock exhaust manifolds at this power level. So shorty headers don't gain a lot. Long tube headers, <laughs> despite what we saw on the, on the Chevy test, long tube headers usually gain a pretty good bit of power, and we're going to show that test here on the small block four. So run with all of the stock stuff and an optimized tune because we ran this with a Holly HP management system. Run with an optimized tune, our basically stock 5 liter Ford produced 252 horsepower and peak torque was up at 307, 306.6 foot pounds of torque. So the first thing that we did, like with the small block Chevy, is we installed a set of long tube headers. So let's take a look and see what we did. We put a set of inch and three quarter long tube hooker super comp headers for a Fox chassis application, run also with three inch collector extensions. Now the, stock, the shorty headers were also run with two and a half inch collector extensions because that was the size of the opening coming out of the of the shorty headers. So run with the long tube header upgrade, the power output, as you can see, jumped up. And this is kind of more what we would expect, even on this mild combination. The power output jumped to 261 horsepower, 
peak torque was up to 321 foot-pounds, and here at 3,000 horsepower, which we typically uh, have on a long tube header change, the torque was up from 292 to 317, so um, a, more like 25 foot-pounds, and that's kind of what we normally see with a long tube header upgrade. That's why they're so popular, especially even for mild applications. So upgrade the exhaust with headers and long tube if you guys can uh, do that. Now let's take a look at our next modification. This was to change the intake manifold on the 5 liter. Now, one of the most common upgrades back in the day was Ford Racing's GT40 intake. They probably sold a million of those, <laughs> or, or certainly several hundred thousand of them, I think. It was a very popular upgrade. It works very well. Now you can go to the wrecking yard, and because these are hard to find and guys want money for the real money for these GT40 intakes, you can go and get basically the same thing from a 5 liter Explorer motor, get the upper and lower Cobra or GT40 style intake that are cast, but you'll get the same kind of upgrades. And we also ran this with a slightly bigger throttle body. This was with a 65 millimeter throttle body, but run with the GT40 intake, the combination jumped up to 279 horsepower, 278.5. Peak torque was up slightly with the GT40 stuff to 323 foot-pounds. There was a slight loss in torque here at 3000 RPM. Torque was down from 300 and 17 to 310 foot-pounds. So most of the gains came past 3,500 RPM for the shorter runner kind of tubular intake compared to the factory HO. Now let's take a look and see our final modification on this was actually a camshaft. We put the extreme energy 274 cam, which is a pretty good size cam. Kind of it's, I, I kind of make <laughs> the joke that this is my go-to camshaft for most of the 5 liter forts. If I ran the crane version of this in my own 5 liter Mustang and have run this cam over and over again, there are lots of other choices. You can run the smaller 258 or 262, 264, depending on the lift that you want. But there are lots of good camshafts available for the 5 liter. Any of the alphabet cams um, worked well back in the day. And now Summit has new versions of those as well. I'll put the, the specs up for this thing and you guys can take a look at that, but it's a mid 500 lift, 232, 240, uh, no, 224, 232 degree duration. And so we'll, I'll, put the, I'll put the specs up, but run with that camshaft upgrade with the stock heads and the GT40 intake. The, our five liter now produced 311 horsepower and 349 foot-pounds of torque. And the nice thing is if you take a look at that, we didn't really lose any torque, at least from 3000 RPM and up. And I don't think that we would have lost any even down at 2500. So the cam upgrade worked very well. And the other thing I want to mention is both on the Chevy and on the Ford, the order that you do these things will also help determine what the power gains are. For instance, if we were to put a ported head on this thing before we did the camshaft, the ported head would show very little power gain. But if we did the ported head after we installed the camshaft, the ported head might show a lot more power gain because now <laughs> the rest of the motor could take advantage of what that airflow had to offer. And you can, the same thing can be said about the camshaft and about the intake. So it depends on at what point we test that during our test sequence, that will determine also what the gains are. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what's the takeaway from our look at basic bolt-ons? First, let's start with the Chevy. I think the most surprising thing with the Chevy was how well that factory Quadrajet intake manifold and Quadrajet actually worked. It made more power than the aluminum wine intake manifold from 4,000 RPM and below. And that's kind of a critical area for a lot of guys that want good drivability and plenty of torque, especially if you've got a truck or some kind of towing application. The great thing is that intake manifold comes with a junkyard motor that you're going to get from the junkyard, so it's essentially free. But the aluminum intake manifold, like that wind or others, actually make a little bit more power. So only you can decide whether you want that extra power and want to pay for that extra power. On the small block Ford, we went up in camshaft, and so that 274 cam worked very well, especially when it was teamed with the long runner GT40 intake and factory head. So don't be afraid to go up a little bit more in camshaft when you're restricting it with the long runner intake and factory heads. Both combinations work really well. Basic bolt-ons work really well. I'm Richard Holder. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, do all that stuff, and I will keep testing.